So today we're gonna to be overclocking the 9900K. We're gonna be de it, testing out before and after temperatures, as well as giving it a much better cooler than what we did in the review. So here we got the H100i Pro all in one. It's a pretty decent cooler as it is, but since the 9900K demands very good cooling, uh, we're gonna give it to it because essentially this is what you're faced with if you don't. Now I did try a five gigahertz overclock in this particular instance, and it's just met with a blue screen of death. So we're gonna be changing it over, first of all, for the custom EK uh, water cooling solution. Then after that, we're gonna be de and checking out the before and after temperatures for you guys. Are you in the market for a Z390 motherboard that just packs nothing but value? Well, if you are, the ASRock Phantom Gaming Series has it all. 12 phase power design, amazing onboard audio, and also a unique implementation of a NIC, which is 2.5 gigabits per second, prioritizing your packets for your gaming needs. Links in the description below if you wanna check out more. So right here, we've got the EK, um, I think it's, it's EK Gaming, Fluid Gaming A240G, so hopefully, uh, all things considered, if I have a five gigahertz overclock versus a five gigahertz overclock, I'm hoping I just magically gain some FPS because it says gaming on the box. But what we got here now is Liquid Pro Cool Laboratories. This is the only stuff I recommend for doing D-lids with on uh, Intel CPU die to IHS contacts. Uh, that's me personally. Other people have their own recommendations and stuff like that. But right now we're gonna put this whole thing together and then we are going to take uh, do some testing with temperatures and then take it all apart and de-lid the chip itself and then test the before and after temperatures for you guys. Are you really, are you really risking it all? Putting it all on the line, this multiple thousand dollar PC, because you're that confident with your loop. Bro, did you see the amount of force I exerted on this thing? <laughs> that ain't gonna leak. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just like pop off and break, and break your body yeah. into <laughs> And the Corsair keyboard and mouse. And the power supply. Yeah, have a look. Yeah, get a, get shit on camera. That's how you put the pipes on, boys. paper towels under this thing. It's a tech yes loop. Doesn't leak. So now we've got the water cooler up here. We've got the voltage set in the BIOS manually at 1.35 volt, level two LLC as well, which is quite a normal setting. AX 1500 watt power supply, pretty much the best power supply money can buy. And we've got a now custom water loop with its own external reservoir and pump on a custom EK water block. And we're going to see now five gigahertz at uh, 1.35 volt, let's hit that start button. Let's have a look here. Let's have a look at these temperatures. Okay, that's a pretty good sign. Hasn't, uh, hasn't crashed yet. But now, we are hitting about 90 degrees. 91. And we've only just started the test. So we're gonna leave this for 10 minutes and then we're gonna come back to it 
and we're gonna see how it's doing. Now, these CPU V core here, I'm pretty sure on Ida64, they're misreading. I'm gonna try to download some other software and see if we can get some more accurate readings because these just don't seem right, I'm sure. Level two LLC is not over vaulting 1.35 volt to 1.42. But anyway, let's come back after 10 minutes of five gigahertz and recheck our temperatures. So, so at this stage, we've got the better cooling on. We've tried playing around the bias with various settings to get this five gigahertz. I guess stable isn't the word because it is passing the stress test absolutely fine. I've tried putting a fan on the VRM there and the real issue here is we're just getting like Cinebench scores that are below that of stock settings. And this isn't right. If your computer's not running right, it's gonna show in the benchmarks ultimately. So what I'm gonna do now to get this five gigahertz overclock is I'm gonna try and switch over to the Asus Maximus, see if that gives us some different numbers. Because when I do this uh, delittered test, I want this to be a like rock solid five gigahertz. And then we can test littered versus delittered temps. Okay, so we're done over 20 minutes testing here on the five gigahertz, which isn't, I know it's not 100% stable because there's some kind of form of throttling going on as we saw in Cinebench scores when we tried this earlier on the ASRock board. And uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and delid this CPU and then actually put a liquid metal on it, attempt to put liquid metal on it and then see if, uh, of course, how much it affects the temps, but also if it helps sort of uh, lift a ceiling that I believe is currently on this CPU. Because this cooler here is like not even lukewarm. I'll pull up the thermal imaging camera for you guys quickly so you can see what's going on. So cooler's definitely not the problem this time around as before I thought it might've been the H100 by Pro, but I still think these CPUs are just getting too hot internally before they can dissipate the heat even to the IHS, which can then go to the cooler. But let's delid and find out. So we've now completed 20 minutes of Ida64 stress test and the max temperature we're getting here at five gigahertz is 91 degrees. So it's six degrees already lower than the non d littered chip. And the good news is, is that the temperatures are more evenly spread across the cores here. And the best news is, is that our Cinebench scores are now running as they should be. So this is really good news because the d lid has not only helped with the temperatures, but it's also helped us achieve a five gigahertz overclock that is super stable, at least from what we can tell so far. 
So I think it's time to move on to a conclusion. But I'm going to do it in the morning because I'm, it's like, yeah, literally like 1.30 in the morning. So I need to get some sleep. <laughs> So it's now morning time. We have booted up at 5.1 gigahertz. Now, there is a little problem here, and that is that the temperatures are fine. Like, they're still under 100 degrees C on all cores. But we can see here that we've got actual CPU throttling occurring within Ida 64. So we're now facing a predicament of temperatures being okay and still under TJ Maxx, actually well with under the limit. And the Cinebench scores are actually confirming this as well. And this further sort of validates what I was talking about with the lower clocks and those Cinebench scores that just didn't make sense before. So now we can finally move over to a super solid conclusion. And there's the 9900K at five gigahertz stable finally, and we saw some really good Cinebench scores. I did learn a little bit more about the whole CPU itself during this process, and we did manage to boot up at 5.2 gigahertz. However, it was anything but stable. Cinebench was crashing. Uh, we could start a stress test, but that was throttling almost immediately. But then we tried to work this CPU at 5.1 gigahertz, and it is running stable, I guess, in Ida64, except for one weird thing, as we saw before. The CPU was throttling, and the temperatures were still well within TJ Maxx. So as we looked at before, when we were having problems before the D-Lid, where we got a stable 4.9, but we couldn't get a stable 5 gigahertz, we're having the problem now where we got a stable 5 gigahertz, but we can't get a stable 5.1. And so we saw a temperature drop as well of six degrees. And so this is what a D-Lid will do for you on the 9900K. It will allow you just to get that little bit extra out of your CPU. However, on the flip side, I honestly would not recommend this this time around to anyone. Taking a razor blade to your CPU is seriously not good. At any given moment, one slip and or one mistake and that CPU is bricked. And it's a very expensive mistake to make if you do it. But if you do decide to do this, then seriously take your time and be very meticulous about it. Uh, because as we said before, this is silicon. We're now working with the die. And I watched Abara's video. He actually sands the die down, which is next level meticulousness. I mean, that guy is nuts when it comes to doing uh, meticulous stuff with things like CPUs. If you haven't already, you can check out his video. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, but in this regard, it's uh, for me personally, I wouldn't go anything further than what I've done here today. Delitted it with the vise, then I skimmed off the solder, used an eraser, and then skimmed it off again, then used an alcohol wipe to wipe both sides of the equation down, and then put some cool laboratories, Liquid Metal Pro, between the die and the IHS. And yes, we saw a solid temperature drop, and we also got an extra 100 megahertz. And the last thing to talk about is EK's water cooling loop. Uh, and this did a phenomenal job of handling the 9900K. And as I said in the review, if you're going with a 9900K and you wanna get some solid overclocks, then definitely go for something custom or really high end. The H100i Pro, it's a decent cooler, but I feel like for the 9900K, it's just not up to the task when it comes to overclocking. Out of the box, it'll handle it fine. Uh, but as we saw with this custom loop, it did a much better job and it was able to lock in those overclocks absolutely fine. However, I probably could get to 5.1 stable, possibly even 5.2 if I grab this whole setup and whack it underneath my aircon. I mean, if that's something you guys want to see in a separate video, maybe even get the RTX 2080 Ti under there too, uh, because there are some really cool settings within the BIOS that we can sort of tinker with to try and extract even just a little bit more FPS. Maybe we'll take a look at that in that video as well if you want to see it let me know in the description below and also let me know what you thought about today's video if you liked it then be sure to hit that like button and i'll catch you in another tech video very soon hope you enjoyed today's journey sort of vlog tour of the d-lid process and the before and after and i'll catch you in the next one peace out for now bye